Hi everyone, this is Dr. Ngit Khandelwal from anatomyexplained.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Anatomy Explained. So in this particular video, I will be telling you about the muscular system, its high concepts in a very brief span of time. So if you are a newcomer and you want to know about the human anatomy with all its concepts and clinical correlation, you can start by subscribing to the channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss on anything. So let's get started. So muscular system, a brief overview and a very important one. So the learning objectives of this video will be function of muscles, properties of muscle fiber, types of muscle, nomenclature of muscle, power and action of muscle. In this particular figure, we can see a muscle with its belly and with the help of a tendon is attached at two places. One is a proximal attachment, one is a distal attachment. The proximal and distal word we have already discussed in the previous video. The link of that will be in the description box below. The important point to note in this figure is this muscle is crossing a joint. Why? Because the muscle function is movement so a muscle has to cross a joint if it is not crossing a joint it is not performing its function the joint over here is normally a movable joint this figure over here is showing in the, on the left side the relaxed state of the muscle fibers and after they are excited by the nerves they contract and this are the contracted state of muscle fibers it is said that the muscle contracts about 40 percent of its original length so what happens is we have a nervous system with a brain and spinal cord from this nervous system we have cranial and the spinal nerves coming out out of these the motor nerves will form neuromuscular junction with the muscle fibers and they will excite the muscle fibers due to which they will get contract the properties of muscle fibers are they are excitable they are excitable with the help of the nerves second after being excited they are contractile then Imagine a group of muscles are contracting and they are performing a movement, therefore the, its opposite of the antagonist muscles will extend, they will stretch. So the other property of muscle fibers is extensibility. Now imagine after a muscle has contracted or after it has extended, it will try to return to its original length, therefore it needs to have elasticity. These are the properties of muscle fiber. Now over here we can see some types of muscles. Number one is the smooth muscles. The smooth muscles are found in the viscerals, particularly in the digestive and respiratory tract. They are also known as non striated muscles. non striated means they have a particular arrangement of actin myosin filaments and they are not under our, our control, so they are known as involuntary muscles. The second type of muscles are the cardiac muscles. So cardiac, as the name says, they are found in the heart walls. So they help to pump the blood to all the tissues of the body. They are striated that is a particular arrangement of actin myosin and also they are involuntary they are not under our control the third type of muscles are the skeletal muscles so as, a, as the name suggests they are skeletal so they are attached to the skeleton so when you generally talk about muscles we generally talk about the skeletal muscles so these are the main muscles which are helping in our gross body movements these are under our control so we call them as voluntary muscles but as they are also like cardiac they are also striated muscles there are more than 600 skeletal muscles found in our body. Now this particular table over here is showing you the nomenclature of muscles. How the muscles are named. The muscles are named according to their shape, their size, their number of heads, their position, their depth, their attachment, their action. These are the various ways in which the muscles are named. So as I told you, there are more than 600 muscles. So let's take for example, if the muscle has two heads, we'll call it biceps. If the muscle has four heads we'll call it quadriceps now if the muscle is deep we will call it profundness if the muscle is superficial we'll call it superficialness if the muscle extends any joint or body part we'll call it extensor if the muscle flexes we call it flexor if the muscle is triangular in shape we call it deltoid if the muscle is straight we call it we call it rectus so these are the ways in which the muscles are named now coming to a question a 17 year old boy engages in an intensive weightlifting program to build muscle strength. The growth of his muscles is a result of which of the following processes? Is it atrophy? Is it hypertrophy? Is it hyperplasia? Or is it tone? So you can pause the video and try to answer it. The correct answer for this question is option number B that is hypertrophy. That process is known as hypertrophy. So the point over here is the power of muscle. The power of a muscle depends on two things. One is the number of muscle fibers and second is the diameter of muscle fiber 
in this particular question the boy over here is in an intensive weightlifting program so what he is doing he is exercising and with the help of exercising he is building more myofibrils he is increasing the diameter of his muscle fibers so that adds to another property of the muscle fibers that they are adaptable they are adaptable so once you start to exercise your muscle fibers are adaptable now the first point over here is the number of muscle fibers now let's see how the number of muscle fibers is increased so what happens is supposedly you have a limited area for a particular muscle so in this the muscles can muscle fibers can be placed parallel this is one way now if you have the same sur a surface area for a particular muscle and if you place the muscle fibers obliquely then you can increase the number of muscle fibers supposedly here just for example there were eight muscle fibers so in this in this arrangement at the same surface area there will be around say 15 to 20 muscle fibers so you have increasing number of muscle fibers this is known as obliquity or they are known as pinnate muscles so we have unipinnate we have bipinnate we have multipinnate what does it mean unipinnate we have when you have a tendon which has a particular line of pull and all the muscle fibers are attached to one side of the tendon an example of this is our flexor pollicis longus muscle which is in the forearm and which goes to the thumb region a bipinnate muscle over here means you have a central tendon and on both the sides you have the muscle fibers inserting into the tendon and multipinnate means when you have a combination of these a bipinnate example over is muscle is our rectus femoris or our say dorsal interosseum. a multipinnate muscle is when you have a very huge arrangement of this bipinnate you have different examples of multipinnate you have the acromial fibers of deltoid you have the subscapularis muscle and you also have the tibialis anterior muscle these are the different examples of the multipinnate, bipinnate and unipinnate muscle. Remember this arrangement is there to increase the power of muscle. Next come to the different actions of muscle. Now the concentric action means when the tension in the muscle is more than the load. Second action is the isometric. Isometric means the length remains the same. So what happens is the tension in the muscle is equal to the load against which it is acting. And third is the eccentric action. Eccentric action means when the tension in the muscle is less than the load against which it is acting. Now let's see this with an example. Supposedly, you have a person over here with the arms lying on the side of the body. If you ask this person to abduct the arm, then he will try to abduct and there will be a contraction in the muscle, a tension will develop in the muscle which will be more than the load against which is, it is acting so that is your number one concentric action now if you ask this person to keep his arm like this on the muscle will be in the contracted state but there won't be any movement so that is number two isometric action now after a while if you ask the person to lower down his or her arm then while lowering down you will appreciate that the muscle remains contracted there will be a tightening in the muscle while there will be increase in the length of the muscle that is your eccentric action that is the load is more than the tension of the muscle you can easily feel it with your left hand over your right shoulder over the deltoid muscle you try to abduct you will feel the concentric action you keep it for you keep you keep it like this for a while you will feel the isometric action and while you lower down the arm you will feel the eccentric action all these three actions can be felt by yourself now the other types of action of muscle are defined as prime mover, antagonist, fixator and synergist. Let's see them one by one. In this particular figure is showing you the prime mover. Over here is the knee joint, a lateral view and the top you have the quadriceps muscle. And when they are contracting, they will extend the knee joint. They will extend the knee joint. The quadriceps over here is the prime mover. It is doing the prime action of the muscle that is quadriceps. Now the next figure over here here shows you the action of biceps humerus that is the muscle that is behind the knee joint when it will contract it will flex the knee joint so when the biceps humerus is acting then quadriceps has to then quadriceps will be your antagonist muscle and when the quadriceps act then biceps humerus and all 
will be the antagonist muscle these muscles are antagonist to each other prime mover can function normally only when the antagonist relaxes so remember now over here in this figure is showing you the example of a fixator muscle fixator means it stabilizes one attachment of the muscle so over here we can see the back side of the trunk and this over here is the scapula and these are the rhomboids and the serratus anterior muscles what they are doing is that they are stabilizing the scapula the reason is when you stabilize the scapula when you are stabilizing one end of the deltoid muscle so that the deltoid can easily function and it can abduct your arm so the deltoid is functioning and it is that is fixator and last one over here is the synergist now what do you mean by synergist see when a muscle with its tendon it goes from one end to the other end then it crosses many joint suppose idly over here you have the long flexors or you have the long extensors so when they go from forearm to the phalanges they are crossing a wrist joint many carpal joints metacarpophalangeal joints suppose idly we have to flex our fingers so when we have to flex our fingers then what happens that that the muscle has to only function at the interphalangeal joints so the tendons which pass through the wrist joint and the intercarpal joints there are the flexor tendons are stabilized by the opposite extensor tendons and these are known as the synergist muscles so that there is no movement at the wrist joint and only the fingers are flexed that is the function of synergist so that's all in the topic overview of the muscle system if you learned anything from the video don't forget to click the like button and consider subscribing it too have fun happy learning see you soon